YouTube challenges usually end up with nothing except unintended problems and dilemmas. There's the mail yourself challenge. Uh, sure, most people fake it for views and money, but if one were to actually do it, they could easily face problems. If they didn't put enough tape onto the bottom of the small, cramped cardboard box, they could fall out. All that would be seen as a body unexpectedly falling to the ground. And that isn't even all of it. If the truck that carried the box were to suddenly get into a tragic accident, they may have no options. They would be confined within a sealed up box, apprehension and panic filling their body as every second goes by. They in no way could gather up enough adrenaline to bust their way out of that box. The truck would gather smoke, potentially even catching on fire. The person in the box would worry even more. Either fire could swiftly spread to the box, burning the person to death, and having them gasp for breath as toxic smoke filled their lungs, or they would be towed away into a dump and slowly starve to death over a long, long period of time. There's the backpack challenge. A person would run through an open space with row of people on either side of them. Those who surrounded that person would toss book bags full of textbooks and other heavy supplies at them. That who ran through would most likely collapse in extreme pain. They could, or would, have deep bruises, dislocated teeth, a fractured skull, possibly even much worse. It is mostly pointless and results in nothing but a long time in the hospital. The only challenge on the internet that won't make you feel uncomfortable is the bottle flip challenge. My favorite. It requires skill and dedication. You must simply land something on its base or tip, uh, such as a water bottle, or a high leader, or chapstick. I don't know, get creative. But by doing this, you can gain a lot of attention. A few kids who call themselves, that's amazing, gained beyond 16 million views on a bottle flip video. Dude Perfect had over 33 million views. Anyone can record themselves doing this and gain success. However, there is one certain challenge that changed me, in a way. It made me question, made me wonder, it wasn't the challenge itself, no, but it was what happened during the challenge. The 24-hour overnight challenge. I will leave it up to you to find out what happens. My name is Nick, and this is my story. This 24-hour challenge is getting us so many views. God, Raymond said in our group chat. It was a mild fall night in Pennsylvania this November. Leaves were mostly done saying their farewells to the trees, leaving the majestic foliage behind. Cars and other vehicles zoomed by outside, their headlights reflecting on the window that lied above my bed. The window had a black curtain, which laid still on the glass window. I sat in my room, whose walls were painted a dark red color. It was a sort of unorganized, empty bottles and several sports balls light across the floor, along with a few rain and winter jackets, which I didn't really show much care for. I preferred my sweatshirts and sneakers, which were mostly the only organized thing in the room. I was in a group chat with my partners, Raymond and Steven. We run a channel known as Tri Trends. There are three of us, so Naturally, that's where try comes from, and trends obviously comes from the certain trends and challenges that we do on our channel. From the ALS ice bucket challenge to the bottle flips, I mean, I mean, we've done it all. We have an estimated 3.6 million subscribers, and upload every Tuesday and Friday. We occasionally will upload on different days, but 
you know, not so often. Our discussion revolved around what our next place to spend 24 hours in would be. And our most recent was in a KFC, uh, which was interesting. We shared a big bucket of chicken. Raymond is skinny, but still is as hungry as a starved wolf. I swore he ate half of the bucket, leaving us with the remaining half. I mean, he probably has a high metabolism, because he eats more than the average person. Around 12.30am, we were almost busted by a guy taking a walk outside our window. He had combed dark brown hair and wore a white Under Armour hoodie with black sweatpants. His hands were tucked into the pouch of his sweatshirt, and when he came by, we dashed towards the kitchen and leaped over the order counter. We laid down behind the counter, blocking the guy's field of view. And after two minutes, we got ourselves back up and looked to see he was gone. And... Well, we were relieved, <laughs> eventually making it out. That was just one of the many ones we did. I glanced back at my Apple computer. It was a silver color, with the Apple symbol glowing in white. Uh, my computer is left of my bed, but a little bit more forward, for scale. The back of it faced my wall. We could do it at a warehouse, Raymond typed. I prepared to type a response. I mean, I thought it would be good, but, you know, there aren't any warehouses around here. There is one 270 miles away, but no other ones. I typed that into the chat. Steven responded. Yeah, true, they often have guards anyway. After that, there was a minute-long period of silence. I imagine there wasn't really a reason, excluding that one or both of us went to get something. But eventually Steven said, How about we do it in the White House? We knew he was kidding around, and played around with it. Yeah, no way of getting caught, winky face. I responded. XD, 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 Raymond also responded. Lol. Steven typed. After about 20 seconds, he then said again, But in all seriousness, I am going to look for some places we could go to. BRB. I sat and eagerly waited him to come back to tell us what he found. And after about nine minutes, he came back. Hey. You, uh... You scared of animatronics? He asked in the chat. I was a bit puzzled and assumed Raymond was too. I merely replied, uh, I mean, I do think that they're a little creepy, but... Raymond said, But what? He probably didn't understand why Steven asked him that, similar to how I didn't understand either. But Steven would eventually type, Look, there's this place downtown called Mari's Burrito Burrow. It's a high-tech animatronic food joint for kids and adults alike. Or, uh, well, that's what the official website says. I had chills run down my spine. I knew what he meant. You know, we could go there. Then I secretly hoped that the animatronics wouldn't be as creepy as I thought they would be. As long as I'm not too close to them, I thought I'd be good. And while it seemed frightening, I knew that the video would blow up. I mean, we would receive a lot of attention. So, Raymond and I agreed in the chat. Okay, you guys free after tomorrow? Type Steven. I thought to myself, I knew I wouldn't have anything to do. So I said yes. After that, we talked about some stuff on YouTube. Typed immature jokes. And eventually exited the chat room. At the time I left the chat, I decided to Google Maury's Burrito Burrow, because I was hungry for info.